Thank you. I got my profanity out of the way earlier. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thank you. We're, we ready, Kathy? I am. Thanks. Okay. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much. And uh, welcome. This is a historic occasion. Uh, Pam's first uh, virtual uh, monthly meeting here. And we appreciate it. Um, just a, 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 a few uh, announcements. Um, uh, by the way, uh, well, one is for, for our next meeting, uh, which will, at, at this point, I, I think we'll, we'll continue to have the virtual ones until we know that the library is, is up and fully running and we're okay to meet in groups. So let, let's just assume we'll be virtual here, but for July 1st at, at nine o'clock, um, we'll, we'll be having, uh, some folks from, um, the Southern Ohio Chamber Association. Uh, Pam had just joined this group. It's a really cool group. Uh, many thanks to Curtis for connecting us with them. And uh, what amounts to is by Pam joining this group, and there are, no, there are just a bunch of other uh, Chamber of Commerce in uh, Central and Southern Ohio who are, who are involved with this. Uh, people who are Pam members can get access to uh, discounts on just a, a, a variety of different kind of services uh, from um, things like, you know, healthcare to uh, HR to just all kinds of things for your business. So we're going to be rolling out more information on that. So you can take, if, you, if you're so inclined, you can take advantage of it. But main, sure, main thing is to make sure people are, are aware of what's, what's out there. So benefits from uh, being involved with PAMA. So that's coming. And then I um, want to thank uh, very much uh, uh, Carly Boost for being willing to uh, be our chair of our uh, communications committee. Yay, Carly. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll, we're gonna be working on uh, uh, essentially uh, uh, ratcheting up our uh, outreach uh, to folks uh, electronically and uh, also working on some improvements to the website and uh, various social media things as such, so more coming there. Uh, also, just wanna pass on uh, a couple of things. Uh, one is that the, the, the city is in the process, uh, you may have already heard about this, but the city is in the process of rolling out a new um, uh, grant program as it, part of its reaction to COVID. Uh, it's, it's, there, there, there are three components to this, and we'll be passing out more information once we have the specific packets from the city. But um, there are three components. One is um, is a grant component where uh, a business, if you're located in uh, what the city's defining as uh, a low to moderate income area, and we haven't seen the map yet, but we'll, once we have the map, we'll, we'll be able to show that. If, if your business is in that kind of area, you can apply for up to a $10,000 grant, just basically for funds to help get your business, uh, make sure that you stay with us and that you're able to keep functioning and such and so we'll be able to have information here for you on that hey so, Bob, not to yes, interrupt you i do have a copy of the map so i'll send it to you so you can send it out cool yeah we were waiting on the official thing we had a training session with the city uh yesterday afternoon and uh this this uh the eligibility for for this um it'll open up applications will open up on uh june 9th and uh, the application period will run through uh, July 17th, I believe. And um, they're still tweaking a few things, and we're going to have a bit more training on it before it comes. But uh, we'll, we'll get the, the map out to you. So you have that component. That, that's a grant component. There's a separate grant component, which I believe is uh, available for any business in, in Columbus. Uh, and uh, that's a, a matching funds grant of up to five thousand uh, dollars for uh, PPE, you know, personal protection uh, equipment uh, funding. So if you have to buy special masks, uh, if you you know setting up something in your business like partitions or safety things, uh, if you save your receipts uh, because this is the kind of thing if you can show that you spent dollars on this, uh, this uh, the city will match it. So we have those two things, and then, and then, and those will, both of the grant programs will be managed by Rev One, and so we'll be working with Rev One to roll those out, 
And then there's a, a, a low interest loan program for folks that'll be managed by ECDI that'll be coming out as well. And so we'll have more criteria and we'll have them certainly uh, at our uh, July meeting, that'll be a, a, a big virtual meeting. Uh, we'll, we'll have more information about that that we can roll out to folks. Um, so that's coming. And uh, let's see, also, uh, just real quick, Lisa, did you want to say anything about that survey to folks or uh, that, that's, that's going around? But, um, uh, the NEC to support sort of understanding um, what issues businesses have faced during COVID, so potential closures, changes in protocols, whatever that might be, um, as well as what they would need to feel comfortable to reopen. We sent out through NCR leaders, and I know Brian um, and used his park email connections and a few other organizations have used that to disseminate so really thank you to all of you um it's a fairly quick survey i know um uh pam or south side and west side have been fairly responsive um to the survey so i know that that outreach has probably reached you but um i'm happy to share the survey link with anyone that may need it again um but if you can disseminate that to businesses we're just trying to get an understanding it is obviously ncr focused but we're really collecting all small business data in general and then just sort of filtering out what percentage of those businesses are ncr components so they're aware of obviously ncr specific um as bob mentioned the new covid funding that'll be coming out through the city is not tied specifically to an ncr corridor it just simply is an lmi um, zone. So, um, you know, we do want to still understand though how small businesses have been impacted. And thank you, Kathy. It looks like she just shared in the chat the Google Forms link. So. Thank you. <laughs> cool. Okay. Thank you, Lisa. Can I ask a question about that survey? Um, sure. A similar or the same survey was also distributed by like the Franklin Board of Trade and some other organizations. Correct. If we've taken that through one, is the mm -hmm. data going to be aggregated or is it helpful to take it through more than one? It's actually the same uh, survey that was disseminated to all just so that we could collect that aggregate data throughout the city since um, the NCR program obviously focuses on quarters on the west side, south side, um, near east side, and kind of the northeast side of Columbus. So um, if you took it through the FBOT, uh, Park, Bama, whoever, um, it's all the same survey. We want to make sure that that kind of was uh, an equal footing and that we were getting comparable information from everybody as well. And for those who have yet to take the survey, if you still are interested, we are closing that on Friday um, of this week. Uh, so there's still a few more days. And like I said, it should take just a few minutes if you have yet to do it. So thank you. Okay. And any other questions on, on any of these updates that we, we've given? Uh, and just one other thing, and then we'll we'll pivot here to our, our speakers today. And we have two speakers today. Um, but one other thing is that if anyone is aware of any businesses in the NCR card or, or really elsewhere that have been uh, in South Columbus that have been uh, damaged uh, by the protests that have been going on, uh, just related to the issues of uh, uh, police brutality, racism, just you know, all the turmoil that the country's going through right now. Yeah, if your business has been damaged, uh, please let me know so we can get this, your information to the city. Uh, they're deciding essentially what kind of help they may or may not be able to do for businesses in that situation. But uh, all, all the more that uh, they need the information from us so we can connect you. So if anybody knows of any the businesses there, um, you know, please, uh, you know, let us know. Um, any other news kind of thing that uh, folks have? And do we want to do a quick uh, round round the room before we jump in? I see a bunch of folks on I'd, the call I'd like to, Bob, I'd like to reverse that order. I'd like to go ahead and let uh, Michael go first and Sarah, and then we'll round table at the end. That way, anything that's covered in any of their conversations, you know, we can also cover in the round. That works. Thanks, Kathy. Uh, with that, um, let me welcome our, our county auditor here, Mike, Michael Cinziano. We appreciate you uh, joining us here today. And we're just hoping that you, you, know, you could chat for a little bit, uh, any, any trends and things that you're seeing in terms of property values, any programs out of your office to help businesses, any, anything you think that might be of interest here. 
So well, the floor thank is you all for the opportunity to be here. I am Michael Stenziano. I have the honor of serving as your Franklin County Auditor for one year and three months. Uh, and so a lot to share. And so I really appreciated the invitation, pretty timely for some of the actions of our office. Uh, and so appreciate the opportunity to provide that update. Do want to start? I hope everyone is healthy uh, and safe uh, during the COVID. I know it has it had a big impact on our community. And then within the last week uh, with the protests, um, really providing an opportunity for our community to come together uh, collaborate and hopefully be a better city and community as a whole. Uh, so starting from that, um, you know, when the governor issued his executive order uh, that essentially shut down a lot of you all and a lot of the state of Ohio, uh, some of the functions of the auditor's office were deemed as essential and so we have been open where the county building was closed our transfer and conveyance, so um, where properties come in and be processed through our office, uh, was deemed essential. And we also serve as the fiscal agent um, for the county. And so I'm popular when people get paychecks because my name's on all their checks, uh, but those services had to continue as well. And so we've been open uh, with the building being closed to the public. It was very, and remains very challenging to establish social distancing protocols. Uh, when people need to get on elevators to go to floors 19, 20, 21. Uh, but we've adjusted. Uh, there is a Dropbox for anyone that needs to conduct business directly with their office. Obviously, you can use email or pick up the phone uh, and call us, and we are ready to help however we can. Our office typically has 125 employees. Uh, that was scaled down uh, to about 16. Uh, we are slowly, as projects and priorities continue through our policy calendar ramping up, uh, but we do not anticipate having all 125 people in the office for the foreseeable future. Uh, the office has done a great job of figuring out how to telework. Um, that was a challenge, I think, across the entire county uh, where there were capabilities in place to have it all go online so quickly. Uh, our data center really stepped up. Uh, but some of our functions with the Board of Revision, so individuals that have uh, challenges regarding property values uh, are now being held virtually, uh, and we continue to do our mediation program also being done uh, online or by phone. Uh, other news to share that the Treasurer's Office sought to extend the deadline for second half property taxes, so that would have been due in June. Um, because the treasurer's request was over 30 days, it required the auditor's office to be a signatory. Uh, so the extension for second half property taxes is August 5th. Uh, for those entities that can pay or if established through an escrow, feel free to pay ahead of time. Bills will be sent out next week is our understanding. Uh, but that kind of keeps the system, for lack of a better word, chugging along. Uh, by having the bills uh, sent out that allows the auditor's office to release what is called advancements to local municipalities so they continue to provide services. Uh, townships, for example, were very concerned when they heard there was going to be a 45 delay, 45 day delay, uh, that they were not going to be able to be fiscally prudent, uh, provide safety services, trash collection services, um, if everything was delayed 45 days. By, by having the advanced process already exists in law, uh, we're able to get them 90% of the dollars that come in. So for example, there's 50 million uh, that has pending from the end of first collection and the second collection. We just needed those bills. But the good news for you all, or for what you won't probably want to hear, is that August 5th is when the deadline for the second half uh, property taxes. We're getting a lot of emails asking, where's my bill? Auditor's office doesn't send the bill out. It's the treasurer's office. The treasurer's office is also the one that you write the check to, not the auditor's office. Um, but we were happy to work in collaboration with the treasurer to establish that August 5th uh, date. And it had to go to the Department of Taxation for their ultimate approval, uh, but we got it done. For entities, though, that were August 5th isn't sufficient, uh, there are a number of limited programs to aid uh, folks on property taxes. Again, it's housed through the treasurer's office, but the auditor's office is happy to provide that information. You can establish payment plans. Uh, with the treasurer's office, there is also, unfortunately, a government form, but a form uh, to seek penalty forgiveness. Uh, it's called 23A, uh, and the information is both on her website, and we're happy to provide it as well. 
Uh, and then if you know anyone uh, on housing property, uh, our office does maintain, although through a board, the property tax assistance program, it's called PTAP. Uh, it's one-time emergency aid in limited circumstances uh, to low income homeowners uh, and they can apply contacting the auditor's office. PTAP has been around for a while. Um, over a decade, a lot of people haven't known about it, and it was housed in a different county agency uh, that we took over primary responsibility uh, in my one year and three months, and so trying to highlight and let folks know that there are those resources available. Any questions on property tax? I think the only ask, um, Michael, is um, if you could just send a follow-up email with some of those links, and when we send out the notice of the recording, uh, plus any other, you know, business that we need to send that we can you know, include those, if that's all right. Great. Happy to do that. So that's the big good. thing. I have a question. Yes, sir. Can, uh, this is Jason Hoddle with Modern Columbus Realty. Can you give us an update on the triennial reevaluation and what efforts have been made and what the results of those were? Sure. Wonderful segue. That was going to be the next part of the presentation. Uh, and comments. Any questions on property tax extension before? Okay, so then let's talk about the triennial uh, update. So that's been the biggest priority in terms of planning that the office was conducting. Uh, for those that aren't familiar, under Ohio law, every six years, we, the auditor's office, counties are required to do a mass appraisal. Uh, that mass appraisal means the office and appraisers that we usually contract with uh, go out and review every property. Uh, then everyone goes through, discuss what's the right property value. Uh, in a three-year gap of that six years, we have the triennial update. And so that's what we were are in in 2020. And that triennial update is a three-year look back. So looking at years uh, 17, 18, and 19 on terms of what property sales trends are occurring. Uh, as you're all aware, Columbus and Franklin County has been a very hot market. Uh, and so when you're looking at 17, 18, 19, you are looking at a large um, valuation increase where housing stock is not what it needs to be as our county continues to add population. And, and so prices have been awfully high. Um, our values for the triennial are adjusted to reflect those current trends. And uh, what the good news is, is you do want property values to be going up. That's a large investment, probably the largest investment most homes or most uh, individuals make in their lifetime. And so that value is a good thing. Uh, where people have frustration is then how it gets tied under Ohio law to property taxes. And so a good example, while we are going to be moving forward with the triennial this year, your property taxes are gonna go up because voters in the primary approved the Columbus state bond issue. So we added a new tax issue. And so we will be hearing from a lot of folks, why are my taxes going up? Um, and the, it, it's the balance. Typically there's tax equalization. It talks about inside outside millage. Don't need to get into the weeds on that. Uh, but you wouldn't see quite the increase except for when we add a new tax or Adam H wants to go forward with a uh, renewal and increase of their funding. And so if the voters approve that, that will result in increased taxes. Uh, but to Jason's other question, so we were building towards this triennial update, and I'll talk a little bit about the timeline. Uh, when COVID hit, though, we were very concerned what the impact was going to be on our valuations, where it was a hot market. When we start hearing that GDP is going to be impacted 10 to 18 percent, that we know people are no longer employed, watching that balance at the same time that interest rates are going down to zero, what that meant for our office. And when I talked about how we scaled down, we did scale down some of our transfer and conveyance. We weren't expecting uh, to see a lot at our transfer and conveyance uh, services, but it has not slowed down. Um, the number of transactions are down from last year and half, but the values are actually about 10% higher. And so with that in mind and wanting to try and buy more time, uh, we did request about a month ago to the tax commissioner to delay the triennial uh, review and update a year. We thought having more data, more time uh, would be more beneficial for residents and property owners. Unfortunately, 
Ohio law is silent in seeking a one-year delay during a triennial. There is a procedure in place if you have a mass appraisal year to seek that one-year delay. Uh, and so the tax commissioner last week came back and told us, I don't have the authority. It's, there's no statute that gives me that authority. Uh, we're not going to give you the one-year delay. He also, though, did deny a couple counties that sought the one-year delay that were in a mass. So he apparently is looking at the trend, seeing that sales are still going on, maybe not as many, uh, but they are occurring, and so wanting everyone to move forward. So in the spirit of moving forward, and we were always going to be doing that uh, before the COVID, and we were hoping to get that additional time, uh, happy-ish to share that uh, Based on our tentative reviews, which have now been submitted to Department of Taxation, we continue to work hand in hand with them. Uh, residential class properties are looking on average across the county at a 20% tentative change increase. Uh, and the uh, commercial class is looking at a, on average across the county, 15% increase. Um, and that for some folks, uh, isn't surprising given the knowledge of how hard or hot our market has been in Franklin County. Uh, but now our office's charge is really educating folks on that impact. And when you look at where those uh, percent increases are occurring, it is on South Side. It are those areas where people are able to get a more affordable uh, property? Uh, put some money in it, and then are reselling it. Not necessarily flipping, but you are seeing more transactions where those price points uh, are uh, easier to enter into the market. And so that is going to be where a lot of um, education and opportunity is going to occur on the auditor's office. What then the rollout of the tentative triennial value is going to be is in August of this year, all property owners will receive the tentative value mailer. We are going to be announcing uh, later this month our Know Your Home Value campaign. Uh, at the same time, we will have a uh, education component for commercial property owners uh, of saying this is the value based on that look back that we uh, have appraised the value app. Again, looking at 20, 15% increase depending on what class you fall into. If people are happy with that number, and don't want to do anything further, they don't. Uh, they, they can stop uh, in terms of available opportunities. If they aren't happy, they feel it's too high or we weren't capturing a bathroom or a home maintenance update, a deck, uh, other uh, investments they've made in that property. Uh, we will be having our uh, informal review process and that is where property owners have the opportunity to engage the auditor's office and our appraisal staff on where they think the value should be bringing in documents of recent sales uh, comparable sales other information we may not have or missing uh, that should be taken into consideration for that value oftentimes it's people seeking a reduction in that valuation although i've also seen where they plan to go in onto the market hey, we want our value to be higher because we plan to sell in the next year. And so there, that's a, a yin and a yang. Traditionally, those informals have been a roadshow uh, held across the county at churches, community centers. Because of the ongoing health pandemic, we are going to be uh, switching to a much more personable uh, and much more accessible process as far as uh, we're concerned and that residents will have the opportunity to schedule times uh, and meet with our appraisers. So it'll be around individual property owners' schedules. Uh, they'll be able to do it virtually. Uh, we will have three permanent uh, remote locations. One is going to be at the Urban League, one in Hilliard, and one in Reynoldsburg, based on the trends. So if people don't like the idea of doing it virtually or have uh, challenges with the technology, don't want to do it by phone, there will be uh, auditor staff permanently uh, Monday through Friday at those locations so people can walk in. Uh, the reason we did the three permanent, we could control better the health uh, and traffic flow considerations where the previous uh, cattle call is kind of people showing up, we're at a spot for one day and then gone. Uh, we had scheduled some that were going to be there two days, but it just wasn't going to be a big lift to make sure we were taking into account everyone's health. So those that engage in the informal review process, we then they leave that meeting, not with a final determination, but having presented the information to the appraisers, 
We then update our tentative values, send it back to the Department of Taxation. They come back and finally sign off. And then in December, final values for those that engaged uh, in the informal or any f properties that had a change are then provided. So that's when that final rate occurs. Again, if you didn't do anything in August, you should see that same final rate in December. Uh, but those that came through uh, the informal process, uh, we update accordingly. And it is then those rates that will be used for tax bills uh, for the next three years. Uh, our tax bills are a one year look back. So they'll be used for bills 21, 22, 23, but looking at 20, 21, 22. Gets kind of confusing uh, in that regard. If people still aren't happy with that rate, then they will learn and we'll talk about it in uh, December, the border revision process, uh, which is another bite at the apple that always exists between January through March uh, to file concerns. And that's where the border revisions, as I mentioned, is occurring and we can set up mediation uh, as well. Uh, the big thing to educate folks on, uh, and hopefully your takeaway, is those value appraised increases uh, for commercial, 15%, for residential, uh, on average, 20%. So average means some communities will be higher than that, some will be lower, but everyone across the county was going up. And then that we are asking people uh, to please work with us um, through that informal process. Residents, property owners have a huge role to play uh, and making sure that we are establishing the correct value. And so looking forward to having their engagement and working through this new process um, that a lot of residents haven't had the opportunity before in terms of being virtual uh, and uh, scheduled around their time. Uh, but we're looking forward to utilizing that and making a more efficient and thorough process. Questions on the triennial? Threw a lot of information at you. <laughs> Jason, Oops, you got any questions on that? I do have one question. Yes, sir. We have, I have some homeowners and some investors who have properties that are currently being renovated. And I don't, I know this isn't administered by your office, but hopefully you can help. Um, if they are intending, you know, the, the tax abatement program has drawn them to these areas. If they are intending to submit a tax abatement request, that only changes the rent value. Is there a deadline for which they need to get phase one in to lock down the current value or how does that work? So that's one thing we have not established the date on in terms of if you went through the board of revision, at what time does it get set? And, and the next thing I'm going to share also we're factoring in. So I would encourage them to contact us in the next month. Um, in June and we can work and kind of establish what we feel that rate should be. So it holds through this entire process. Okay. What, so I guess you're going to decide if it's, if they come in after the, the initial proposal in August or if it's after the final, is that what the question is or? So the question, I, what, if you went through the border revision process last year and so we came back and said, instead of it being 250, it should be 225, or you went through mediation. I am challenging our staff that then that 225 needs to hold as our tentative value for the next look back. Yeah. And that's traditionally, that hasn't been how it's been done. They just, again, yeah. look at the spreadsheet. Um, I just wanted to use the restroom before I hit the road. Thank you. The, so, so I, I'm not sure if that's the same question I'm asking. Okay. I'm talking about the tax abatement program. Right. So if I, if I file for tax, I'm, I'm, I'm currently renovating a house. We have final permits. This, this is a personal I'm renovating house. Um, I have, we're, we're getting ready to close the final permits. We're getting ready to submit the tax abatement package. Is the tax, is the current tax today the number that we'll start with or will at what point will we be starting with the revised number is that after august august number august okay so as long as we submit those tax abatement packages prior to that initial communication we should be okay correct and so that and that's where i'm suggesting if you let us know in the next month our team should make sure that's incorporated so when that mailer goes out in august it is captured accordingly Verse, we learn about it in August, so people have a collective consternation of, hey, why isn't it being applied? 
then you got to go through all the informal process and, and where the staff, again, I don't think has been as consistent in past uh, mass and triennial updates of trying to get people in a good spot on that August update. Unfortunately, auditors across the state say, oh, we've got the Board of Revisions. We've got all these different process and procedures in place. Uh, my strong preference is less government forms, less consternation on the front end. And so that's where I've been challenging them to kind of work harder to make sure we're reflecting that. Yes, there are backstops in the process, uh, but we can do a lot on the front end to make things a lot easier. Thank you. Of course. And then the last piece, um, a little bit to what Bob shared, and there's going to be, or there is an article in the dispatch. Uh, for any property owners uh, that have experienced damage or destroyed property, either from the rains and the flooding or um, from any property damage due to uh, rioting, uh, we do have a mechanism uh, under Ohio law that we can work with property owners uh, and they can file a value deduction and we can apply it to the current year and reflect that then for the following tax year. Uh, so please contact our office, uh, depending on the timeline of when the property was damaged. Uh, there is a formula for the percent reduction allowed, but we are available and want to be working with owners uh, that that applies to. If it's a broken window, you have insurance, uh, maybe not as big, uh, you wouldn't want to go that route. But if there were larger systemic property damage uh, that occurred, uh, our office stands ready to help. Uh, navigate through that process and see uh, what reductions are available. So those were the three things. As always, feel free to call me, my cell, 614-219-9224, 614-219-9224. You can email me in the office, Auditor Stenziano at franklincountyohio.gov. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Any Anyone else have any other uh, comments, questions for our auditor? I do. Can I ask a quick one? Morning, of auditor. This is You've seen the presentation before. <laughs> I have, but it was something that I, I was taking notes last time and didn't pick up on. Um, the three permanent locations for the informal review, Hilliard, Reynoldsburg, and Near East, did you say that that was tied to where you think the increases are going to be the steepest, or do you have an idea of which neighborhoods are going to be um, the most scared? So I, I'm, I'm pulling up the spreadsheet that we created on school districts. Um, and of course, when I start touching it, it gets so Columbus sees one of the largest increases. Um, Jonathan Alter, Whitehall, uh, and Reynoldsburg. And so we are trying to spread it out, making it convenient. Um, we were always heading to the Urban League. We recognize our building is not the most accessible nor desired location. Um, so if we said we're open, you know, pay for parking, hike through security, hike through uh, floors tw to get to floor 20. Um, we were always playing on the Urban League. Uh, as we pivoted away from the informal roadshow, wanting to have additional locations. And so that has been the recommendation based on where they see the trends. Oh, I am. Would I love to be in every neighborhood? Absolutely. Um, but in terms of resources and where we expect to see folks uh, come and, and engage. And, you know, uh, what's been disappointing looking at the past statistics, uh, it has been the Dublins, the Upper Arlingtons, uh, the cool. suburban communities, and not necessarily within the city of Columbus. And so that's our staff's challenge to make sure people are aware uh, that they have a great opportunity, a role to play. Uh, when we gave the presentation to the realtors, they said, you know, how do we encourage our clients to fight with your office? I was like, this isn't a fight. Uh, we need their information. We, uh, the process is established so that they have a role uh, and we're taking that responsibility very serious. And I think that traditionally the auditor's office has done a good job with the informals. It is not required under Ohio law. Um, not all counties provide this. Um, I would say the vast majority say, go come to the Board of Revision, fill out the government form, and, and we'll get you through the process. Um, so we're, our residents really do have a great <laughs> process in place. They just need to take advantage of it. And we will be sharing some of the statistics of if you do come to the informals, what that reduction has meant. And we are having the conversation of overlaying it uh, with our demographics of the county of who have come in the past. 
because you know twenty percent is a big increase. Uh, again, it's a it's not a bad thing to see that value uh, increase. You want to see those values, uh, but we know we hear from a lot of folks. I'm being property taxed out of my neighborhood. Property taxes continue to go up. Uh, what more can we do? And, and there is a, another conversation on legislation, uh, what changes we could do to Ohio law, but don't want to bog you all down with that today. Okay. Well, Thank I think you. there's something really inclusive it to your family, and I appreciate that too. Thanks. Of course. Thank you. And any other uh, uh, questions? Thank you very much. You're welcome to stay with us or not, uh, depending on how your schedule works. But, but, uh, I, I need to that. go support a small business for my community, my virtual community hours. So I am not going to hang on, but uh, please uh, join anytime at the virtual community hours. For those that aren't familiar, I do weekly community hours, traditionally a coffee shop uh, or at a library, obviously, uh, as we are just beginning to be able to have sit down service. Uh, yeah. We've been in those virtually had a great opportunity to support community grounds uh, on one of those during the last two months uh, but we're trying to hit every township uh, village and so I'm heading to uh, nothing but cakes in a township so no. always an interesting dynamic in that regard nice. well we'll meet you there yes <laughs> all right thanks everyone <laughs> thanks take care all righty um, Sarah Lenke who's with us uh, uh, today, uh, she, uh, and many days, <laughs> uh, uh, leads up the efforts for the Southside Thrive uh, Collaborative and uh, has been a partner with us as we've tried to help promote food businesses and other, looking for other ways to sort of have mischief uh, and, and help support our businesses. Uh, Sarah wants to, uh, uh, would like to give folks a little update about the census and if any other topics, feel free. Sarah? Great. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for letting me be on your agenda this morning. Um, I'm Sarah, like Bob said, with Southside Thrive Collaborative. We are really a network of 40 plus different uh, nonprofits, businesses, and community groups trying to come together to support Southside residents, um, really by leveraging all of our strengths and uh, the various efforts uh, groups have going on. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and remind everyone that the 2020 census is happening. Um, there is obviously so much going on right now um, between COVID and the social unrest our communities are experiencing. Um, and so just wanted to take a few minutes to remind you that the 2020 census is happening right now. Um, if you haven't already, please go online or you can complete it by phone. And as business owners, I really just wanted to invite you to help get the word out about the 2020 census. Um, I know that PAMA and your businesses already probably use a lot of the data that's gathered through the census to inform, um, well, one, your location in the South Side or other neighborhoods, and two, your marketing and promotions um, that you do to drive business. And so really it's an important opportunity to count uh, and gather demographic data uh, within the community. Um, we at Southside Thrive are working to do a couple of things that we also invite you uh, to join us in. Um, we are gonna be hosting next Wednesday at, at uh, 5.30, I kept thinking it was five. At 5.30, we're gonna host a virtual session just to really kind of answer. We know that there's some trepidation with some people about filling out the census and the privacy concerns. So, we're going to host a bit more of a detailed information session. So if you or others you know want to join, um, welcome you to participate. Um, I also can provide you, I know that um, people are in different phases of being open to the actual public, but if you need any marketing materials, whether for social media, your websites, or um, we have a nice little half sheet that um, you know, can be physically provided to customers or other people you know, um, let me know. I'm happy to help provide you those resources to make it easy for you to get the word out. Um, and then something else that we're doing, but um, it's been a bit delayed. We're trying to figure out when we'll actually do it, but it is a social media campaign, just really trying to um, use the hashtag Southside Counts and encourage people to post on their personal accounts, um, their, their business accounts, you know, get 
get, get the census done. Um, as far as I know, the field operations here in Columbus are supposed to start here in June, um, but I haven't gotten a lot of communications recently from the city, who is the main U.S. Census liaison or the county, um, and so that was delayed, obviously, with COVID. So people probably in June, I would say it, starting in July, uh, very likely will start having people come to their residences and saying, uh, you know, you haven't completed the census, so please do so. Um, other than that, like I said, I just wanted to remind you that it's happening and ask for your help. If you have other ideas, um, I, I'll put my contact information in the chat. Please feel free to reach out. Um, and I did just kind of want to also dovetail two other updates that I think this group might be interested in. Um, one, yesterday, many of you received an email from me probably that included um, updated community resource information. So we know that employers and their employees are trying to weather what is happening right now. And so we put together um, a list of Southside specific community resources that you and your employees um, who might need some additional assistance in meeting basic needs um, you know, are encouraged to take advantage of to try and make it through these times. The second, um, something that we did about a month ago, we, um, Fortner uh, Furniture reached out to me and um, basically presented uh, a question about, um, they had the opportunity to take on a contract for making masks uh, for more PPE, PPE within um, whoever their, their um, contract was with. And they wanted to make sure that there were enough people um, within the community at large that could be hired to actually fulfill that, that job before taking it on. So um, I, with our network of workforce uh, development providers and all the great community relations, including PAMA and the Area Commission, we put the word out and we were able, I think, at least to get three people hired from the community. I think we had at least uh, three others who were offered a job but decided to not take it for whatever reason. And so it was a really great example of coming together um, to try and link people to these good jobs in the backyard um, and help that employer fulfill their employment needs in order to you know, continue to operate and hopefully be successful. So just wanted to share that because uh, like I said, a lot is happening and wanted to highlight something positive that came as a result of PAMA and a lot of different collaborations that have been doing a lot of work within the community. Um, so I'll answer any questions and uh, appreciate, again, just having a few minutes to share some information. Thank you so much, Sarah. Anybody have any questions or comments? Going once, going twice? So, oh, three times, no. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, Sarah, um, with, with bringing on uh, Carly as our, uh, our uh, I don't know what the official title is, PR or marketing. Marketing or and PR chair. Yeah. So one of the things is, and, and I don't know if you guys have been, and, and Walter over at the Manicor is like ready to choke me, but, um, but you know, I've been hashtagging, you know, a lot of stuff. And I think that's one of the things, if we can work together, Carly and all of our merchants and everything, as we see, you know, the pit and we see, the folks that are doing, you know, Joel doing stuff at Common Grounds and stuff like that, where we're tagging and saying small biz, best mm -hmm. side, south side, you know, if we can start that where stuff, then that way we're starting to get noticed as people, you know, do stuff. I'd like to see if we can possibly make that happen. Yeah, I mean, for That's me, great. I completely agree. I had Bob and I had a really great conversation yesterday, and I think that the first thing we should do is get the table together, figure out who's going to be on the committee, and then set up a couple priorities. You know, are we gonna are we gonna focus on the website? Are we gonna focus on social media? You know, given the limited resources that we have as a group, where can our time be most impactful? Um, but no, I would definitely say if there's anybody who has even a passing interest in communications and marketing in Facebook, <laughs> you know, let Bob know and let's, let's all get together and start talking about it. Yeah. Great. Great, Curtis. Thank you so much. And, and Carly, thank you again for being willing to, to do this for us. And, and uh, as Carly said, uh, you know, we, you know, uh, 
you don't have to be uh, a PAMA trustee to be in, involved with this. I mean, you're welcome to be, but you know, whatever. We just love to have uh, some extra hands to help us do a promotion for uh, Southside PAMA stuff and for the businesses and uh, everything. So any, any other questions for, or comments for Sarah? Uh, if not, thank you so much, Sarah. Uh, and just uh, two other uh, quick things. One is I would be remiss if I, I didn't acknowledge our, our, our newest PAMA trustee, Noah Mabry, who's on the call with us. Uh, and uh, Noah, we appreciate your being willing to step up and help with us. Uh, for folks who may not know Noah, uh, he, uh, we've known him for a few years here, and he and his business partner, Singleton, have a foreground studio down at the fort. And uh, anyway, we, you're, he's going through the hazing period here of being a new trustee. So... Uh, <laughs> well, you're welcome on board. Uh, uh, thanks, Bob. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to, to be here and happy to be involved. So uh, let me know if you need anything. I'll, uh, I'll put my contact information here in the, uh, in the chat. Okay. Thank you so much. And uh, the only other item I had before we just open this up is uh, uh, I, uh, Kathy had mentioned to me uh, 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 something we heard from Sherry Palmer, Keep Columbus Beautiful. There's a litter-free lawns program. Uh, Kathy, do you know anything more about that that we can share? Or? Ah. <laughs> yes, I did pull this up. Um, so, you know, because of COVID and so on, there's been a lot fewer cleanups than normal. In fact, at one point, Keep Columbus Beautiful was suggesting people not pick up litter. Uh, I think now, and and I walk, you know, the, the dogs around here, we often go over to Parsons. Um, there, there's, you know, quite a bit of litter accumulating um, in various places. So either way, you know, there is an encouragement now to, to, to kind of help out, right? And so there's a pledge uh, here, and I'll drop that link also uh, in the chat. So, you know, obviously we encourage our own businesses to be, um, to be keeping their own properties clean and, you know, obviously our neighborhoods as well. So. Great. Th thank you so much. This is great. All right. Uh, any, any comments, questions on that, anybody? Uh, if not, uh, just open it up for anything that anybody wants to talk about today. So, hey, Bob, I wanted just to let everybody know tomorrow um, council has reached out to me or Emmanuel Ramey's office, uh, and I'm going to be testifying uh, about the uh, two ordinances that the city council has for the $5.5 million loan and grant program. Mm -hmm. um, so I just wanted to let everybody know I, I will identify myself as a commissioner, the VP of PAM and everything, but just to be transparent so folks know. So someone doesn't freak out and say, God, what's he doing? Or, <laughs> or something of that nature. But I'll just say I'm, I'm for it. I, you know, I think this is awesome that uh, they're able to engage and, and put that money out to uh, these individual businesses. A absolutely. Th thank you. Thank you, Curtis. We, we appreciate that. And that, that'll be something that'll be included in the update. Uh, that, that's, a, that's a virtual public hearing. That'll be tomorrow at 5 p.m. Uh, using a WebEx link. And uh, yeah, this is a good program. This is this is what I was referring to early on in the meeting. So it's it's good stuff, and you'll be hearing more about it. Uh, other announcements or things you want to talk about today? Anybody? Hey, Bob. It's Nancy. Good hey, morning. Nancy. Uh, I have a couple of things. First of all, I'm thrilled that Sarah is promoting the uh, census. We all know how important it is to be counted, and with regard to what we receive from being counted as a community. So it's very critically important. Some of our new Americans are challenged with that because they're afraid of uh, all kinds of negatives from the census. We wanna encourage everybody that's separate database. It's not shared with other federal agencies. And so it's really important uh, that we get everybody's uh, voice heard. I also wanna remind everybody that we have a council community meeting Southside virtually on Tuesday the 9th at 6 to 
And for those of you who aren't familiar, our council community meetings usually began with Council President Hardin introducing the council members, and then you would go to everybody's table or different tables to talk with the council members, as well as some representatives from the mayor for that a, a department like utilities. This time we're having a virtual meeting and uh, uh, you sign up for a Zoom room for a council member. If you don't have that information, I'll send it to Bob uh, again, but I'm sure everybody's seen it and uh, we would love to have you participate. It's real, it would be really helpful if you would pre-register. And uh, finally, we wanna encourage everybody and their families to register to vote. We don't know exactly what our voting situation is gonna be this fall, but it's important to uh, uh, register with the Secretary of State as well as to confirm you're in the database. So that's all I have. Um, everybody should know how to contact me. I'm Nancy Pryor Selly. I'm with Community Engagement for Columbus City Council, and um, I have the best side. I have my beloved South Side. So that's all I have for this morning, and I'll put my contacts in the chat. That's the hat. That's the hashtag, Nancy. Best side. Hashtag best side. I know. I know. And and as a side note, I will be running uh, eight Zoom uh, meetings tomorrow because I want or, or when we do this council thing because I want to be like overloaded, you know, in every room. So just <laughs> we will be asking PAMA members to kind of you know that are able to attend to try, try to divide up. So I don't know how we're going to do that yet, but. Uh, you know, we would like at least one PAMA member or stakeholder, you know, to join each breakout so that Curtis doesn't have to try to multitask too much. <laughs> cool. Thank, thank you so much, Nancy. Uh, and for uh, folks who don't realize that um, uh, Nancy is a, is a wonderful uh, connection with us, with the city, uh, with the city council. We also have Beth Fairman Kinney, who just waved a second ago. Beth, Beth Hi, been, everybody. She's been on the call too. She's our connection with the Department of Neighborhoods and everything. And do you, do you have anything you want to share, Beth? Or yeah. Gonna... Good morning, everyone. Um, so I just wanted you to know, thank you so much for having this virtual meeting. Um, as some of you know, who have been working with me since uh, um, the pandemic began, you know, as your neighborhood liaison, I'm here for you. Um, I'm continuing to listen and work with you. We've been, I've been holding virtual roundtables. Um, trying to emulate what we had at the Reeb Center and my Pride Center. Um, the Reeb Center, by the way, is open, um, but for appointments only, um, they are continuing to serve their lunches, um, 11 to 2, Monday through Friday, and they have their Tuesday night meetings. So they're continuing to do that. But as far as my work, I do have a weekly roundtable that we've been doing since March. If you are interested in joining us for that, we alternate the time between 9.15 or 5.15 alternating weeks and we have a different um, speakers, um, community leaders, um, nonprofit agencies that we work with and our city staff who are continuing to work in your neighborhoods. Um, I also do an email digest that I send out and I'll put my email in the chat so that you can join me. As far as some updates, um, I know um, with the current state of the city, a lot of us are feeling, a lot of us are torn, a lot of us are hurting. Um, and just, I just want to remember, remind you, you know, that um, we do have the right to protest and our city has the responsibility to listen. And we are beginning that listening and we're working with the community. Discussions have begun. Tonight on Facebook, I know you were talking about another panel at five, but if you want on Facebook, and this will be recorded, if you go to MBK Alliance, there's a discussion with President Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and um, our Martin Luther King Speech Award winner, uh, Play on Patrick will be also um, uh, featured there. Um, as you already know, Mayor Ginther does have um, an executive order implementing a curfew um, at 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. Um, that remains in effect until it's uh, uh, rescinded by him. And uh, there is an email that if um, that they have opened, it's report CBT, CBD at columbus.gov, and I'll put that in the chat. Um, to accept reports of any um, perceived excessive force or complaints over the protests um, that you can respond to. So those are my updates. Um, 
And as I said, I'll give my email in the chat if you have any questions or want to join my roundtables. Beth, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, any, any questions for Beth or comments to anybody or, or any other topics? Uh, uh, Carla, are you, st are you still there? Did you want to say anything about scholarships or anything? Hi, so you sorry. Can run, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I was trying. I got a phone call and I just, I said, hey, you know what? I know that they're about to wrap up and I have a sub billing. They're, they're about to say my name. So let me call you right back. Um, you know, just wanted to let everybody know that we did um, select two recipients for the PAMA scholarship. Uh, I'm in the process of being able to um, work with uh, Park, their fiscal agent for the scholarship to be able to um, cut the check for those awardees. Uh, everybody will receive uh, just a small biography. I'm also waiting for um, uh, two pictures of the, each of the individuals, just to be able to be able to put on um, a face with their um, biography. But just to give a little bit of background or just an individual. So the first recipient, her name is Simone Boyd. Um, and then the second recipient is named uh, Leslie Renee Perez. So each of them will have just um, a little bit of who they are and then um, a snippet of their um, essay that they each answered, which were both very um, compelling. And we had a total of four members of ours participate in helping us be able to uh, choose them. So just wanted to give that small update. And like I said, you guys will be receiving more information soon. Okay? Cool. All right, thank Thanks. you so much. Thank you, Carla. And. Uh, Carla referred to uh, us being, uh, or uh, to uh, Park being our, our, our fiscal agent. We have Mr. Park uh, here, uh, Brian Higgins. Uh, for uh, folks who don't know, uh, uh, Pam and, and Park like to partner together. Oh, there, there's Brian's kid. He has a hand <laughs> yeah. up. He has his hand up too. So let's let him have some conversation. There. I did. I'm very, I'm very polite. And, and plus, you have that shirt on again. You know, that shirt yeah. is creepy. This is my. You <laughs> did not do that, Tim. This is my Zoom shirt. I wear it, you know, 20 minutes a day. And I keep it next to my desk so that you can't tell that normally I just sit around in a tank top all day since March. <laughs> um, I wore pants the other day too, instead of shorts. That was a big, that was a big moment for me. Wait, we're happy that here that you wear pants, Brian. Well, you know, I'm just glad they still fit after sitting around for so long, you know? Uh, hey, thanks for, for um, uh, acknowledging me. Um, yeah, we're, Park is happy to serve as fiscal agent again for the scholarships. I um, think it's it's a great thing that, that uh, PAMA does and we're happy to be, you know, supportive as, as such. I um, also wanted to give you guys uh, uh, just a quick bit of information. Um, I attended virtually last night the Schumacher Place of Association meeting where I shared um, you know, Park owns two single family homes at 921 and 923 Parsons, which is the corner of Stanley and the southwest corner of Stanley and Parsons. And um, we bought them, they were vacant, we renovated them, we've been leasing them affordably for a couple of years. Uh, but as I started to think through, um, you know, maybe, uh, maybe that two single family homes on Parsons isn't the highest and best use for that real estate. So we started to explore what it might look like to have uh, multifamily housing on that site maybe a little bit of commercial space. Um, our goal would be able to keep those units affordable to people. I'm not exactly sure what that means right now because it's a function of costs and we're still very early in a conceptual design process. But I went to the Schumacher Place meeting um, really just to get thoughts and input and hear what people had to say. And frankly, I'd like to do the same thing with PAMA. So after we all get off the Zoom here, um, I'm gonna shoot out just a little, um, a uh, little information packet that I, I put together with our architect um, just to show you, uh, you know, basic renderings, concepts, floor plans, parking. Our idea also is to work with Community Development for All People to um, A, allow us to use their trash area where, uh, you know, next door at the um, All People's Market. Maybe we'd add an additional dumpster, uh, but they kind of have a trash nook area over there that we could glom onto. And then there's, um, Maybe we can access some additional parking. You know, there's the lot next to the, what was the post office, I suppose. Um, and, you know, there's a little green space there on the eastern edge between the pavement and, and the sidewalk. So we've thought about, like, if we pave that additional 12 feet or so, it would give us the opportunity to put in a, a whole secondary row of parking. So 
uh, which you know could then benefit us as well as them and frankly anybody who comes to the intersection of Whittier and Parsons, which was the intent of having that public parking to begin with. So um, just wanted to give you a little um, broader scope of, of what we're thinking about. And so, hey, like I Brian? said, I'll, I'll shoot. Yeah, yeah, no. Hey, is, is that what you were working on with Amanda at uh, one time? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Um, if, if there's anything that uh, we can do on that to help out, we'd be more than happy to, if there's, you know, any room for us. So just let us know. Yeah. That'd be great. I, I'm sure there's always a uh, LA kind of element, right? So, um, so thank you, and uh, yep. happy to hook you up. You know, we've we've um, Berardi Architects has uh, uh, volunteered to do some pro bono design work, but they're not landscape architects, and you know, so I appreciate that. And if anybody knows any engineers that are looking for, uh, you know, some pro bono opportunities. Or, is that uh, civil like or that. what do you need? Yeah, civil. Okay. I'll see what we can find. Yeah, you know, I mean, uh, we're, we're obviously a tax exempt organization. So to the extent anyone wants to donate time, that is, uh, you know, consult your accountant, obviously, but uh, that should be a tax deductible um, uh, pro bono kind of service. So but yeah, I'll shoot this around and I'd love to get any comments uh, that you'd like to share. I think it's, it's very early uh, preliminary kind of concept. So I expect some feedback and, 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 and whatever. Um, just happy to, to get some opinions at this point in time. So one of the other things that I want everybody to be aware of too, and something that I've asked, uh, and Brian, I don't know if you were, I think we had this conversation. One of the things I'd like to see Pama do going forward is when projects like this with what Brian's doing and other folks are doing, um, I'd like to see if PAMA could, you know, do a review and do a letter of recommendation to the commission. Um, you know, I think that goes a long way once it, if, if, whether if it goes to BZA or if it goes to city council, that the business community is supporting this because obviously the more bodies uh, and the more folks that we bring to the avenue and, and to the south side in general um, helps those folks be able to, uh, you know, support uh, you know, their business is being open, you know, later or what have you and stuff. So uh, I just want to make sure that everybody's aware that's something that I'd like to see done, you know, going forward on anything that's happening. That's great. Thank you, Curtis. Thanks, Curtis. Yeah, it'd be fantastic. Uh, Brian, th th is, thank you. Is, is there anything else you want to chat about or? Um, no, we're on the verge anyway of my child taking over the meeting so uh, <laughs> i can always mute but you know yeah i hope hey brian i helped with uh we'll call it an incident at one of those properties a couple years ago uh, i think i know what you were referring to my, my kids got to see it and i locked them in the truck <laughs> yikes oh, good. teaching moment oh, <laughs> yeah there's been a couple of um incidents over there over the years. And we've had some challenging tenants we've had uh, I hate evicting people but you know at one point in time we had um, a woman on a lease and then she had brought in some people who were off lease and then she left and so the other people stayed so they were just legit squatters and um, and they actually barricaded themselves in the house so it was a whole thing um, and then there was a, like a tragic incident and there were some other things and um, but yeah, those houses, uh, you know, are a hundred years old at this point and, and, and they kind of look at, they're sitting in front of a bus stop, which even though I've power washed them, it doesn't really help the perpetual grime. Yeah. And uh, I, I would love, you know, I think to Curtis's point, um, you know, we're talking about, you know, right now our plan calls for 16 units and that's 16 new households, you know, that, um, a may or may not already be somewhere in the South side, but it can come and hopefully have a positive experience, be consumers for businesses on the avenue or elsewhere within the community. And, you know, maybe um, transition into home ownership or, or whatever, you know, like, that's kind of how this works, right? You, you try out a neighborhood as a renter and then, um, you know, if, if the stars align and, and the economics work, then maybe that's, that's where you end up buying and, and settling down. And so, yeah, I, I, whenever there's an opportunity for that to happen, I think it's, it's a positive thing. Cool. Ethan uh, Tamanika lives catty corner to that property. And I know when I discussed it with him earlier, if you want to reach out to him, he's 
in general supportive of the idea you're presenting. That'd be great because there was some concern at the Schumacher Place meeting about the scale and how that would impact or impact the, the, some of the residents on Stanley. And, and I said, well, yeah, everything's kind of east of the alley here. I'm not sure that it would impact anyone at all, but you know, people are very, I think, um, you know, maybe overly mindful sometimes of, of how it can concern people and which is great. I mean, I'm all about um, uh, folks who, who want to be judicious and when they're making decisions, but, but, uh, but yeah, to the extent that there are actual neighbors who think this, this could be a positive, I'd love to, maybe we can talk offline, Aaron. Yeah, be happy to. Cool. I live within a block, so I'm, I'm a positive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kathy. I want five stories. Thanks, Karen. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> and, any other topics that anybody wants to talk about today? Yes, no. I just Kathy, want to my, my, my comments. I mean, we, don't, we have not, as Pam uh, produced an official statement, but uh, for the number of uh, trustees and others that I've spoken to, you know, we 100% do support other protesters, we do recognize the systemic racism within our governmental entities. Um, and, you know, we're asking for an accelerated change um, that, that's absolutely required. We also care about all our business owners and all of the difficulties that you're in right now. Um, and anything we can do to help, you know, please let us know. I'd like to add to that. Uh, thanks to Curtis. Uh, maybe some of you have seen an email he sent out addressing some of those issues that we hold here on the south side. And I think he's going to help trigger some important conversations that need to be had. So thanks, Chris. Thank you much. And any other comments, anybody? And, and Kathy, maybe we can coordinate sending out the updated information. If you send me stuff that you'd like to have in it, I'm happy to send that out. But it works. Yeah. Anything else, anybody? The sooner the better, because some of these things are timely. Um, updates, yep. Right, so. yep. Thank you all. Uh, we'll, uh, hey, I have a question. Are, are we posting this stuff? Oops, sorry. Oh, sorry, Curtis. Well, and Jason chimed in. Jason, had, Jason had a question. Okay. Jason, I was just trying to see if there was if, if an update had been given about Realtor Care Day and how it has transitioned. No. I, I actually I listened to the realtor folks last night at the Southern Orchards meeting, but okay. I didn't think anything about that. I'm not on the realtor, I'll, to be clear, I'm not on the Realtor Care Day committee, but I am a trustee on the board, uh, so I'm fairly familiar with it. The original plan, which was pretty robust to work on individual houses and the neighborhood cleanup and various projects, which was originally scheduled for June 6th, um, was obviously canceled for appropriate COVID reasons. There has one. There was one main project, which is building a community garden um, for Ronald McDonald House, and that project is moving forward with a very limited number of volunteers. Most of the volunteers are um, Columbus Realtors leadership, so it's going to be those of us who are on the board and and um, some other folks. But instead of a one day hundreds, actually thousands of people all over Central Ohio. Um, it's a much more, you, you'll see much more limited groups of realtors doing um, projects throughout our communities. And for the South Side, it's going to be June 10th and 11th, a appropriately spaced out, um, building, that, building that garden. So we're happy that we're still able to, as an organization, contribute. It just has to look a little different this year. Remind me, Jason, there's also a Master Gardener um, work day at the Fruit Park on Saturday, and they are not looking for additional volunteers for kind of the same reasons. Um, you know, but there will be opportunities going you know, forward. So thank you. So, Bob, uh, the question I was going to ask is uh, mm -hmm. like with these Zoom meetings and stuff, let's make sure that they're also put, put up on the website just so if those yep. folks that couldn't attend uh, can you know, log in and, and see what the discussion was and everything, please. Absolutely. I know uh, a, a YouTube channel for them just because it's an easy place to host videos. Yeah, I think that would be smart to do that is to get a YouTube channel because you can also, can't we link the Zoom to the Zoom or to the YouTube and it just feeds it over? 
Yes, you can convert it to MP4 and just upload. That way, Bob, you just once we get it set up, it's it's done. Yeah, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I had all the information on the website about the, the call itself, but yeah, to be able to have this information so people can go back and and see everything. Well, the big, yeah, the biggest thing is we need to be transparent and we need to have people be able to know what's going on and stuff. Yep. And, and this is the way to do it. So absolutely. And anything else? Uh, Kathy, Curtis, Carla, anybody? Uh, if not, uh, thank you so much. We, we appreciate it. We're going to, we try to keep these uh, uh, as close to an hour or under an hour if we can. A lot of stuff today, but uh, thank you. And we'll talk to you. Let's talk again uh, July 1st, if not sooner. Take care, everybody. Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Thanks. Have a great day, everybody. You too.